Okay, working on our solving inequalities, which again, hopefully, lots of this is going to come back to you. Okay, I completely understand if there's some new stuff. So for this foldable, if we didn't put it together in class, you're going to fold this page over hamburger fold style. But you can still see these words on the side. All right, and then eventually we're going to cut these lines here at the end. I like to fill it in without having cut them first. So that's why I don't cut them first. I'm going to cut them at the end. Again, if you want to like highlight or color these all up, make it all nice and pretty, you're more than welcome to. We're taking a look at the inside. So we're practicing solving our inequalities, which is not that much different than solving equations. There is just going to be one difference that we'll talk about once we get to it. But the steps are going to be the same. Your goal is to get the variable on one side of the inequality, and then the other variable is over on the other side of the inequality. So for here, I'm going to start by subtracting my 9. I'm going to give me a 28. I'm going to divide by 7. Some people might distribute your 7 through your parentheses, which is fine. I prefer to go with the division by 7, which we talked about in class the other day. So we're going to end up with x is greater than or equal to 7. So with our inequalities, we always draw a little number line to show what our solution represents. Here's my number line. So I always put 7 in the middle because that was the answer I got. And then you want to go at least one higher one lower. Because this had the or equal to, it's a closed circle on the 7. It was greater than, so it's shaded to the right. All right. I'll try my example number 2. This time I do want to do distributive property because I have there two variables on the one side. I'm going to have to combine. I will do distributive here. Now I can combine my negative 2x, my negative 3x, subtract my 8, divide by negative 5. And this is the difference. When we divide or multiply by a negative, this sign flips. All right, so you need to write yourself a little note. Multiply or divide by a negative, the sign flips. I'm going to go ahead and make my number line. This time in my, I'm over in the negatives. So negative 7, 1 lower would be negative 8, 1 higher would be negative 6. Open circle, because it is not or equal to, and because the sign flipped, x is greater this time, so it's going to go this way to the right. All right, example number 3. Got two variables on either side. I'm going to first combine these ones here on the left. And then I'm going to add my smaller one over. And then I'm going to subtract my 17 over. And then divide by 4. Even though my answer is negative, I did not divide by a negative. So my sign is not going to flip. So I got negative 6, negative 5, negative 7, open circle. And this time it's going to shade to the left the left side. Because if you read from the variable, x is less than negative 6. So it's got to go to the left. I know some teachers have taught the trick that your shading goes in the direction that the arrow is pointing. That's not always true. Like in this case, it's not true because your variable is not on the left side. Okay, So you have to be able to read from that variable. Trying the next one. Combining these, I get negative 3x minus I want to add this 3x 
over, so that makes me 6x. Add my 4s, that's going to end up giving me a 0. So divide by 6, I still have 0. So x is greater than or equal to 0. So filled in circle. This is going to go to the right. So again, it is greater than. Our fractions. We were talking a little bit about fractions in class the other day. But with our fractions, what we want to end up doing is we want to get rid of those fractions. Fractions are our friends, which is what I do always say in class. But they're not always the easiest to be able to manipulate and to be able to work with. So we really want to try to go ahead and get rid of those. And so what we do is we multiply everything by whatever the common denominator would be. So in this instance, a 6, a 2, this is a 1, and a 3, our common denominator here would be a 6. So I'm going to multiply everything times 6. So when I do that, that first fraction would end up becoming 30x over 6 because this 6 would get multiplied by all of your numerators. Okay, so your denominators aren't going to change because this is the whole number 6, which is really over a 1. So your denominators are all being multiplied by 1. So all of your numerators would just be multiplied by 6. So then this would become 6 over 2. This would be 24 over 1. And then that would be 12x over 3. I don't always show this stuff because I usually will jump right into the simplifying of it. So here, 30 divided by 6 makes that 5x. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That would be a 24. And then, then 12x divided by 3 gives me 4x. So again, I don't always show this. When I multiply this by 6, I instantly reduce it down to the 5x. That'll come as you practice fractions more and more. But if you need to show this step, by all means, please do. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you can't. So I'm going to subtract my 4x over and then subtract my 3. So we end up with x is greater than or equal to 21. 22, 20. Close circle because it's more equal to. And it's going to shade to the right. All right, example six, same thing. We got some fractions. So I'm going to multiply everything by 14. Because between a 7 and a 14, common denominator is going to be 14. So again, I'm going to show that step I don't always show. So 14 times 3 is going to be a 42 over 7. 14 times 9. I'm really going to push Mrs. Pelkey's brain right now. 6 carry the 3. 126 over 14. That's going to be 14 over 14 plus 14x over 1. So again, cleaning it up, 42 over 6 is 6, 162 over 14 is a 9, 14 over 14 is 1, and that's going to become a 14x. So I'm going to try to do two things in one step here. I'm going to subtract my 1, and I'm going to subtract my 9x. So 6 minus 1 gives me 5, 14x minus 9x gives me 5x by 5, and x is greater than 1. Open circle, shade to the right. All right, last one, or last set, I should say. So number 7. So because I have variables on both sides, I just got to start combining, so I'm going to do distributive property over on the left. 5x plus 1x gives me 6x over there on the right. 
So then when I subtract my six x over, they actually end up canceling on both sides. So I'm left with 18 is less than 17, which is not a true statement. 18 is not less than 17. So that's not true. So this really is no solution. When you're solving, that may happen. And so if you end up with an inequality that is not true, that is a no solution. Let's see what happens over here with this other one. So again, we start distributing. So 9x plus 6. 9x plus 1. Get my 9x's together by subtracting it, and I end up with 6 is greater than or equal to 1, which is true. 6 is greater than 1. So this is what we call an identity, which if you remember, that means infinite solutions. That means no matter what number you plug in for x, you will get a true statement. So that means every number is a solution. It's an infinite solution. Some people call it all real numbers. We stick with identity. We call it an identity. All right. So as I said, once you have that finished up on the front page, we're going to cut along here just to where the fold is. And you end up with, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You end up with four little tabs, so you can look at each one separately. Glue in the back and put that in your book. 